Three. Welcome to Shunga Town. I'm Tom. I'm Galen. And these are your 15 minutes of fume. fume. Wow. Doing 15 <laughs> Shunga reviews in our previous iteration was so much. That's a lot of perfumes to smell in rapid succession while reacting to some of the most preposterous erotic artworks ever committed to woodblock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, bad news <laughs> is we are still missing one for today's batch. Uh, the good news is for us that that means we only have to smell 14 Shunga perfumes today. I feel <laughs> like I um, have dark circles under my eyes in anticipation of this. How are we going to do it? That's, that's a lot. The video is going to be long. We're going to probably get flustered and along the way we're all just gonna learn some things about what's in these little bottles. All I pray for is absolutely no technical difficulties as we did with oh, the last Shunga please. video which was... Uh, we could use <laughs> group uh, prayers for fewer technical difficulties that's just showbiz but like we have... We just don't need have time <laughs> for this no time. Our life is hard enough. It's a disaster being this cute to start off with, and then on top of that, you add technical difficulties. I can't even tell you. So, we're just gonna hope for the best. The first one that we have, okay, because again, the one that we're missing, by the way, is Fracas with 11 Kabuki Actors. We can review that separately later on when we get it. Um, we just don't happen to have it. It's the one Shunga that we're missing. So we are going to skip past that and go straight to the next one, alphabetically. We're, we made it all the way up to the G's last time. It took 50 minutes to get to the letter G. This one is Gokugetsu. My, my. We are dealing with, you know, a pretty standard kind oh, of see. like frontal penetration scene. It's funny, though, because the woman is kind of like twisted in a weird way. Like right, that's she, why I was I was confused. Is she closing the screen? Is she opening it? Is she trying to get away? Is she, you know, I don't know. But uh, the scent is deep red musk, oak moss, white mint, tuberose, wood smoke, and uh, brocade chypre. All right. So, yes, that's what we're dealing with here. Do you remember on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race when Michelle Visage pronounced it brocade? And everyone laughed at her. Oh, this is nice. Oh, okay, what's amazing about this is I can actually, it does interestingly have like a fabric smell. Yeah, it does. <sighs> <laughs> Whoa! Okay, um, this is a really heavy, heady scent that's just like um, clouds of like incense and swirling shadows and mysteries. It does have like a smokiness, for sure. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Woman as Dragon perfume that we did for Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers. Um, and then there's like these like glints of like the sweetness of the musk and like the white mint that just kind of like poke out and like provide this like, you know, lustrous kind of top area. Yeah, the mint is playing a really interesting part in all of this because it it manages to blend in rather than like stand out in like a mentholated yes. kind of way. I, I was a little concerned when I read that. I was like, white mint, how's this going to work? And it kind of blends, It actually really works. <laughs> it kind of takes the sweetness of the musk. It just kind of like smells kind of like rich and intimidating. And uh, like there's a forbidding quality to it, which I find really interesting. Really, do, I mean, do you get the woman as dragon thing too? I think that's also like a red, mu a smoky red musk. It is. It's, that one's way more like spicy, peppery, but... Because of the red, yeah, the red musk and the kind of heavy darkness of it. Yeah. This is like, I mean, it really smells very lavish. This is fascinating. It does weirdly smell like someone's home because of the wood smoke yeah. and the brocade. Brocade. <laughs> I mean, honestly, even as it's drying down, because in the bottle there's like a lot of bombastic, um, you know, burning and musking about, and already just a few moments on the skin, it's kind of mellowing out and there's kind of a singed quality to it, but it's like the uh, the oak moss is kind of like stepping forward and it's just becoming a bit earthier, a bit, yeah. you know, it's like dry and earthy and smoky. 
And then the mint there is not like sweetened up by the musk really at all anymore. And it's just kind of got that kind of like mentholated kind of like, I was going to say like a sting, you know, like just, uh, it reminds me a bit of the, I know in the green lovebird, the mint note was sweetened up, but still where it's just kind of this like, uh, um, what is that that the mint does to your nasal passages? It's just kind of like, it give, it's just got a, a zing. Tingle. It's got a tingle to it. A chill. A, but it's not really, it doesn't read as a chill because not everything chill, is so but like, warm. Almost like there's a draft. Like there's just something where you're like, no, there's a little bit of fresh air coming in. Like a raw nerve. She, I think she opened that curtain. <laughs> like a raw nerve exposed. Oh, she opened that curtain all right. Quite lovely. Yeah, I really love this. Uh, it's, a, it's a big surprise for me. Well, if you can surprise Galen, you can surprise anyone. All right. Um, I'm not ready to leave yet. Well, uh, I mean, we... Okay. Yeah. I'm like, how do I make you ready? So okay, we... I'll go. Okay. The next one is Imayo Irokumi no Ito. I'm not a Japanese speaker. I'm just saying it like I think I'm supposed to say it. Um, another portrait of lovemaking. This is like a little more tender. The parties seem engaged. Not like in marriage, but just like, you know... Everyone's present. Um, it's just kind of a no lovely... No one's like distracted opening a curtain. Or right, anything. or inspecting a lantern. That comes yeah. later. <laughs> um, you know, nothing too... This is relatively tame by Shunga standards. There's like, a, there's like a, a panel, like one little area where you're just like, oh, yep, there's smashing it. Um, velvet mosses, green tea, white sandalwood, hemp, dried grasses, and soft ferns. Uh, I love it how it pairs with like I don't know the mood of the scene, you know. In a lot of these, like the there's, color palette. Yeah, there's like a bit of color palette, but there's like an interesting like interpretation of um, of art happening where it's like it's not it's it's not literal at all, but you can like maybe trace elements to like inspirations. But that requires you to look at the artwork a lot more closely. So proceed at your own risk. I forgot to give the disclaimer where I say all of these are incredibly not safe for work and that we're going to be showing the images but you're already here so you know soft and smooth and kind of slippery and green there's like um a really kind of airborne quality to it it's got almost like a freshness of like a breeze but otherwise it's kind of like all these notes are kind of dry and quiet and really like calm it's really relaxing yeah um very 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 green uh, but like shady green yeah and there is like a weird chill to this, which I'm imagining might be, I mean, that's probably gotta be some like mosses and ivy and such. Of course the T note is like kind of subtle and I'm not picking it out specifically, but I think that that's kind of like helping it give like, you know, like a good green tea has that kind of a grassy mm -hmm. taste to it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for the sandalwood too, by the way, because I think that that note in here kind of really is what makes it into like a perfume, like a fragrance, you know, because sandalwood is a little more recognizable of a note and it's kind of incensey. And so this isn't like necessarily a full like great outdoors style perfume. It's just like, it's like some of the ones in the Shungas that we reviewed before earlier this week where it's like, or last week where it's like the indoors kind of meets outdoors. I was going to say that because it's like you have like the... That kind of like indoor quality of like maybe having tea, but also the windows are open and fully the open. Breezes. You're in a hammock. Oh, you're in a hammock now. But indoors, you didn't know. But with the doors open. One of those indoor hammocks. Yeah. Careful. Indoor hammock. We know what those are called, actually. It's just like a kind of an interesting, cool, shady, fresh, relaxing. I don't know. It's yeah. Like, it's just very like. I am not overwhelmed. I am completely at peace. I think is just a great thing to have in your arsenal for summer, for example. Yeah. Yeah. What I love about the Shunga collection is that there are some that are really are full of bombast because these um, illustrations are like riotous in their full of depictions bombast of, themselves. Yes, there's <laughs> things poking and flying and cavorting and then um, I don't know, there's also this like the other side of like love and intimacy though, which is just these like stolen quiet moments that seem really anchored to like a particular memory or scenario. It's just beautiful. Now we are inspecting the lantern. Get your magnifying glass. And this is another scenario of lovemaking in which the uh, receptive partner I don't, I don't. here, 
I it, don't really know what's going there's on. There's a lantern, and she is inspecting the lantern in the middle of lovemaking. She looks, like, completely not interested. It reminds me of but... the studies that have been that have been done about um, smartphone usage and the amount of people who actually, like, check their smartphone during sex. And it's surprisingly high, especially among women. Um, and this is the sort of the... Uh, she didn't have a uh, cell phone. Yeah, this so is the equivalent. check the light. Just, it's the lantern. I feel like the lantern's dying this what is your phone other than a kind of a lantern it has a flashlight that's true so i feel like this is one of the more relatable to contemporary folks but the scent is incense smoke green cardamom pod white tuberose orris root cedar wood beeswax white chamomile and tea leaves and moss okay so This is interesting because I can see how it's going to be like a little bit of a combination of the last two that we just smelled. Maybe. Oh, wow. Totally different. Totally different. Okay. I'm smelling the cardamom in the bottle. I'm definitely getting the chamomile. There's a lot of tea. And then there is like that hint of moss, but nothing at all like we just smelled, which was very deeply mossy. Yeah. This is really interestingly more of a an herbal tea concoction but it does have like uh it is incense incensey can you smell that yeah so it's not <laughs> as um really sm- like it doesn't have that smokiness of the one we smelled uh gokugetsu not that smoky and it's not that mossy as the last one this is one of those scents that i think you could wear without people realizing that you're wearing perfume you know because it really just smells like a couple of different um tea blends yeah it's very like herbal tea and incense yes and even like the cedar and the beeswax these are notes that are like um i mean if not necessarily subtle um not going to be like immediately associated with wearing some kind of yeah frou-frou perfume yeah 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 so it allows you this is one that you could wear i think to just like smell good in more of a stealth way Ooh. So people would say wow you smell wonderful and you'd say thank you i just always have it's just been this talent of mine it's very strange. People comment on it constantly, and I'm just among the blessed who smells very good all by myself. I've been waiting for this day. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just my natural odor. Uh, I smell really great. We at the great. lab do not require to be constantly credited for everything. Like, if part of your fantasy involves people just assuming that you just smell that good, that's fine. It should be the same with makeup. It's like, you know, oh, wow, you, your skin looks so great. You don't just, like, start listing all of the things that you like, put Thank on you. It. it is completely my skin. It's just normal for me. Just another day. Oh, I know. I was born beautiful. <sighs> oh, I know. Yes, yes. Just act really irritated, like, uh, yes, yes. yes. Just trying to get through life, elbowing my way past all the compliments that keep uh, getting in my way. The next one that we have, I've been waiting for this, Kimi Ga Dai Wa. Quite frankly, it's a picture of two cats fucking. It's, uh, there's just, that's it. It's Sorry. Not, it's, <laughs> I mean, how do you think that, wh- where do you think all the cats come from? You know? I don't know. That's, it's this. So, you're welcome. Thanks, you know. That's me being cats. You're welcome. All right. The scent notes are toasted Mysore sandalwood, saffron, and sweet amber. I've been excited for this one. This is a blend after Galen's own heart, and not just because of the graphic illustration of cats fucking. That's not. Um, but because of the scent notes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you love a saffron. You love a sandalwood. This is definitely one that has that wonderful, like, fuzzy smell that smells like a living thing with fuzz. Yeah. And we're not talking about, like, CGI Cats the Musical fur. We're talking about, like... I mean, it would never. No. We're not talking about Dame Judi Dench lifting her leg entirely over her head so that she can lick herself. Again, I would never talk about that. No. I'm the one in the relationship You're the one who, doing, who you talks mean, about it. I forgot about that moment in the movie, <laughs> and now I'm upset. You know, she really did that, right? That moment uh, on set, they were, like, in rehearsal, and it inspired. They're like, wait, could you do that again, like, on camera? And she was like... Oh, absolutely. And then did it. And it really set a pace, you know, for the other performers because it's like, where do you, you know. Anyway, what are you smelling? I love, like, uh, this kind of funky amber. I love it when the amber gets funked up a little bit. It's just got, like, this kind of curious, like, to it. Um, Curious what now? You know, it's, like, not, like, a really smooth creamy untraceable amber it's the kind that makes you just kind of like twitch your nose a little 
I love that. I mean, I can smell the sandalwood, but it's definitely under the underneath the amber. Yeah. And the saffron isn't like really bold either. This is like a really amber forward scent, but all together just like a really warm, funky, you know, kind of spicy. Yes. Gently spicy. Gently spicy. The amber makes everything so gentle. It's like, you know, it's 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 weirdly beguiling. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I love this. It reminds me of that amber that I loved so much from the like Terebinth and um, Black Amber Minaj scent that we did recently, where I'm just going to keep going back to it and being like, you know, it's just like got real character. I think the sad thing, amber is such like an accessible perfume element because in a lot of cases they really sanded the character down out of it, you know? Do you get any saffron at all when you're smelling it? You do? Okay. Yeah, but it's not it's like... subtle. It's, yeah, it's not like super spice no but it does kind of impart like i mean there's like a kind of a warmth and a color tone there that is yes yeah goldeny yeah warmth yeah yeah you know how it is you know how it is with cats <laughs> so do not put this on cats don't let your cats lick it um don't do it be a responsible cat perfume person yeah oh, okay here's where we really move into um Uncharted Waters. And that's saying something after the two cats fucking perfume. But um, now we are here with Levitating Phallic God. Oh, it sounded like a radio guest. We're here with Levitating Phallic God. Thanks for calling. This artwork is probably the most um, outlandish of anything that we have done this collection. It's, it's intimidating. It's like some kind <laughs> of spider god. Like, a, like kind of sitting in a spider web. But there's definitely a kind of a dick hat, or is that just his head? Interesting. Uh, the scent is vetiver, apopanax, licorice root, black tea, lemon peel, and cashmere wood. Hmm. There's not like a comfortable place to rest in all of this. Every single one of these notes, I think, has its like own edge. And oh, I'm a little nervous. Yes, it's a disquieting scent, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the best authentic reaction to a perfume anyone could possibly ever hope for <laughs> it's actually kind of did it make you rising and panic? upsetting i was a little panicked i just went somewhere very dark like a vast darkness <laughs> like under the skin oh no oh no <laughs> i'm gonna get turned inside out <laughs> so the very first thing that i get there's like a bit of a scorch from the vetiver and then like a, a beguiling <sighs> darkness so Scaring You're me. not going to put it on, are you? It's I have to do this myself. No, I do need to try it on, but I, it's, it's scaring me. <laughs> the, the I think it's the licorice. The licorice is a little unsettling. <laughs> I love licorice. I'm not afraid of that part. But like, but like, with a scent with this many, these many like kind of discordant notes, like there's a sense of like, how deep will it go? How far will I be taken? There's like a sense of powerlessness in the face of a perfume like this. I'm just not in charge of what the scent wants to do. It's just gonna do, it's gonna keep on doing what it's doing till it can't do what it's doing no more, like Pearl Bailey. Weirdly, on the skin, I think with the tea and the lemon and the cashmere sort of like um, come to the rescue in terms of being a little more recognizable and comfortable and the tea and the licorice make a little sense together and the tea and the lemon make a little sense together. It smells way better on the skin and way less scary. <laughs> It smells um, like a really interesting, like, rich, uh, I want to say almost like a lounge. Like, it really has a sense of place, you know? Yeah. It's woody. Yeah. It's actually woodier than I expected. And it has a surprising sweetness that I want to say is a combination of, like, licorice and maybe a Papanax. But, like, um... It's, like, still woody and dark. Old-fashioned. Musty. Very, and, like, like, uh, like a, a bygone... Yeah. Time. Out of out of time. Out of place, you know? Yeah. Can I smell it on you? Oh, it's so nice. It is. It is nice. I had initial fear. You're amping the vetiver a lot more than me. Thank God. I think I'm amping, like, the tea and the apopanax. Um, really fascinating. Um, I mean, it's just, like, a really dark, rich, bold, assertive, levitating, phallic god. Mm-hmm. 
it makes it's the kind of thing that makes you wonder what your own god has been doing for you lately you know because this is like an actual display of power i'm glad that you overcame your fear i don't see this being one that you would necessarily wear no, <sighs> no maybe i don't know it's powerful. I'm intrigued by it now. A lot of people wear <laughs> fragrance to feel powerful, you know? And, like, sometimes that's connected to gender and sexuality, and sometimes it's connected to other things. But this is definitely one of those that is, like, a clear statement, and it's not, like, offensive smelling or anything, but it's also, like, bold in a way that maybe makes people startle a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're easily startled like Galen. <sighs> So talk about a 180 swerve, because we're going from Levitating Phallic God to Peach Vulva, which is, I think, the counterpart to the Cherry Blossom Vulva that we reviewed in the last set. Her sister. Their sisters. Um, they don't hang out. It's like uh, June Havoc and Gypsy Rose Lee, you know? Two very talented sisters who have very different lives, each with different recollections of the past. That or Joan and Olivia. Oh. Know. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, that is a peach vulva. I feel like I would recognize if you if we were, if we were doing this blind, I would have definitely been able to pull Levitating Fellow God and Peach Vulva out of a lineup. That's what binary gender really gets you. This is amazing. Uh, it says sweet apricot, sugared amber, frankincense, gold cardamom, rice milk, and a golden peach. It's peachy. All right. It sure <laughs> is. Um, I Hello. saw someone in a review in the parlor or forum describe the um, the peach flesh as like close to the stone, which I thought was a really nice description. That I don't know if that even really means anything because I haven't eaten enough peaches to know the different I guess and taste close to the stone. But I like the imagery. Uh, but it really does have like a nice. Sh syrupy, sweet, sugary, apricot, peach thing going on. Yeah. The rice milk, though, really takes it to an area, like, that's... I think that's where you get, like, a half step closer toward, like, the body, you know? Like, the smell of, like, something intimate, because it's not a fruit scent. There's a little bit of incense in here, a little bit of spice. The rice milk gives it this kind of, like, pallid, you know, milky, creamy... Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, wow... I'm right up in there. I mean, it's a really gorgeous peach. Also, I can tell the apricot. Like, it's not just the peach. I can actually, I can't always tell the difference, I guess, in a smell, but I can smell apricot and peach distinctly from each other in this blend. It's so peachy. It really is. <laughs> it is as peachy and fruity as the as the cherry blossom one was floral. Creamy floral versus, like, creamy fruity. There's no flower note in here whatsoever. So, um, you know, two very different vulvas each alike in dignity. I love smelling the uh, frankincense sort of just kind of like rise off of this, like a vapor. It really reminds me of like some kind of warm toasted peach thing, like a cobbler. It doesn't have like the pastry note or whatever, but there's like a real warmth emanating from it. Two thumbs up. Very peachy. Two thumbs up is a terrible review to give anything with the word vulva in the name, but Next, we are on to Raucous Games inside a bathhouse. Well, oh, this oh. is much more in my wheelhouse. Wild Plum, Sweet Incense Smoke, White Ginger, Red Sandalwood, Labdanum, White Tea, and Pink Pepper. Wow, this sounds very lively. And looking at the artwork, which involves just numerous people raw dogging it in a bathhouse, just having a great time. At least you know the place gets washed. Maybe. Wow. Okay, so having smelled something really sweet and fruity just a moment ago, this is quite a twist because it's there's definitely that plum, but it's kind of got a sour plum quality to it compared to the peach anyway. Yeah. Just kind of a tart. You know, those wild plums, they're not like, you know, not tamed. They're not camera ready. I love the spirit of this. I'm not really in the bottle getting so much of the incense, but like, it's kind of like scattered. It's going in a bunch of different directions at once. I can smell the colors. I definitely recognize that white ginger note from smelling it other places. So that's there. That's like a nice kind of like bright 
pale edge. The sandalwood isn't super bold here, mostly getting like the plum, the ginger, and the pepper, but then those are the notes I think that would be most like statement-y. That's what I'm getting to though. Right off the bat. Sometimes you gotta do like a nice like long inhale where you're just like, like the little like <laughs> suppressed inhale so that it lasts like 10 seconds. I think I, I have way too much on me and I'm already, I'm getting that pain in between the eyes <laughs> <laughs> where I'm like oh oh the delicious pain of having tried on too many exotic there's perfumes. a lot of scent in the air what this is is basically like lightly sweet and fruity tea herbal tea concoction again very different than the other one with the chamomile but the, with the ginger and the white tea and the pepper it kind of takes it to a refreshing kind of like soul quenching place and that plum is calming down almost immediately so that it's just kind of like a hint, you know, a squeeze of plum. As this dies down, I think the resinous and incense qualities will just, you know, only uh, persist and maybe assert themselves a little more. Hmm. You're done. My sinuses are having a bit, a bit of a moment. R.I.P. Here we have rippling water in the stone basin. There is a stone basin. It's technically in the, the painting. In the painting, and the water is rippling, but what's really going on here, of course, is like... The sex. A big, a big sex is happening. The scent is spring water, cade, frankincense, pine needles, juniper berries, and Sicilian white bergamot. Ooh, so we're like in aquatic territory here. This is like a surprisingly gentle. I was expecting it. Maybe it's just because of like the dong that I'm looking at that I thought it might have like more force to it. This is a kind of an interesting um, greeny blue sparkling, like almost effervescent watery blend with just like a twist, like the juniper and the bergamot, like make it almost into like weirdly like some kind of fancy cocktail. Yeah. But then there's that frankincense, which I, you know, is more, it's bolder than the one that we previously just smelled, for example, so. I think I just put it on top of the peach. Uh-oh. There's like, a, I don't know, I'm running out of space. So I, yeah. I'll just, you know, sit here and smell my hand indecorously. I'm gonna go right out on a limb here and say that if you are looking for like a more gentlemanly fragrance in the Shungas, this is like a lovely one. You know, it has like some uh, scent notes that end up often in masculine fragrances, but there's like an interesting gentleness and tranquility here. It's yeah. like kind of distinctly non-aggressive. Mm-hmm. Weirdly, that's like not my style normally, but I find it really comforting. I do really like juniper, is the thing. Next, we move on to shadow pictures. So, in this particular instance... Wait, I need a screen or it's just a hand puppet. Well, pre you know, pretend. In the shadow pictures on display here... Um, it doesn't seem like hands are really as, you know, involved. In fact, there is What's like a... What's he doing? What's he putting on that little table there? Um, I believe it is a pen What's ice. What's happening? It's, you know, giant phallic objects, which may or may not be connected to people's bodies being balanced on a series of tables and um, support supporting structures. Um, I really, you know, should I be watching? Do they know we're watching? Is it a performance? Or is Shadow Pictures more like, you know, we're, are, am I spying on them? I don't really know. Shoot. It looks like they're comparing meat. We'll just say that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> parchment and hay absolute with black pepper, smoked oud, frankincense, vetiver, and patchouli. Whoa! Okay. I hadn't really looked at this one before, but that's a lot of notes in a row that just really got my attention. I bottled this one, and I don't remember how it smells. Ah, like. that parchment scent is right out of the bottle, like liquid yep. paper, as it were. But it doesn't smell like liquid paper. Oh, because of the peach vulva perfume on my fingertips, I'm getting like weird wafts of other things. Boy, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that in this house. Fascinating. So it's got a kind of like a sharp, the parchment note is a bit sharp. Um, and then the hay is really smooth. So it's like sharp in a way that like, but also contains its own antidote. And then on the skin right away, like this is like a kind of like a prickly collection of scents. 
patchouli, frankincense, vetiver, oud, pepper, and parchment. Like, it's just like paper cuts wherever you go. But, it, I mean, that just overall makes it kind of just, like, um, interestingly, like, lively. I mean, how about that? Interesting, yeah. There's almost, like, a menthol quality to it, which I want to say is because of the frankincense. Are you getting that? Yeah. Like, a nice, potent frankincense. This definitely has, like, a lovely, like, monastery scent to it, which mm. would also kind of explain, like, the, the, like the dick play. Um, but it, it, it smells really old world. Like, there's, like, elements here from out, like, you know, like, between the hay and the parchment and whatever. Like, it's, like, a whole setting. Really fascinating. Mostly what I'm getting is, like, a papery pepper. Papery peppery. Which is not bad. Say it five times fast. No. It just kind of pulls you back and forth all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, because they're... Just when you think, you're like, oh, that's the pepper. But, like, it's so well married to, for example, like, the patchouli. And it just kind of all flashes past in a slideshow of notes on repeat. Uh, that's It's brilliant. It's just brilliant. There's definitely, like, a smokiness to it. But it doesn't have the full-on wood smoke of the one that we smelled earlier. Just a kind of, like, a really weirdly lived-in kind of scent. But, like, very kind of, like, um, officious completely unsentimental like this is a place where important things happen like um puppet shows with your junk well <laughs> here's something that could happen to almost anyone uh surprise almost. surprise ejaculation now when i saw this on the list of fragrances before we had even seen the artwork or the notes i was like that is classic shunga this is the one where you're just like, someone's like, wow, you smell really lovely. What is that? And you're like, surprise ejaculation. And then they are like, okay. And then they do it. Just kidding. Um, the notes though, white pear, white champaka, pink grapefruit, and effervescent white musk. Really? Okay. So this pear note, we don't do a lot of pear, but we've had a few in the past couple of years. And I just, I'm really fascinated by it because I think for most people, there's imagining like some kind of bath and body works kind of mm -hmm. splash of fruit juice and it's amazing how the pear has a kind of a weird um almost like melancholy fruit scent yeah do you get that there's something really interestingly emotional about a pear that i really don't understand and here it's offset by some like you know lively other fruit notes it's not super grapefruity, but there is kind of a little juicy burst. Mm -hmm. um, the white musk is just kind of like, uh, it's not assertive. But there is like, you know, when it says effervescent, there is a kind of like a, a my cup runneth over kind of thing happening here. Yeah. And the champaka just kind of classes it up with a little, taking it out of the realm of like the fruit salad and making it into more of a lovely bouquet of different types of scent. Bursting with a wonderful vitality then you look at the artwork and this guy is just fully lost in the rapture of accidentally nutting everywhere so <sighs> like that did not happen on purpose he did not realize that was an option in this moment the more i smell it also i'm getting a little more of the champaka also so oh, so there's like oh surprise um definitely I think um, as it dries down, you're going to be left with more of the incense note. Mm -hmm. I love surprise ejaculation, and yes, this footage will haunt me, and that sentence will be remixed into, you know, club music tracks for, you know, generations to follow. Well, we'll see. I'll end up on a Know Your Meme page. So now, we're down to the last few here. Travelers under a tree observed by foxes. So I've been so lost in this collection that I did not even really realize that this was happening. Are the foxes doing it? The foxes are doing it. I think everyone's doing it. The humans are doing it. The foxes are doing even it. Even educated fleas are doing it. <laughs> the foxes are not doing it with the humans, but it does no. look like they're watching the humans while they do it, which is unsettling. Maybe having like a competition in their little fox brains. I'm not going to get, like, competitive with, you know, a fox. About never. Oh, never. never. Well, I would never do that. The scent is 
white tea, rice milk, and coconut husk. Relatively simple, sedate smell. Um, in the bottle, really like a, a nice fresh white tea scent. The rice milk is like just a splash of rice milk. And the coconut husk in the bottle, the tea is so strong that I'm not really sure what I'm... I'm definitely smelling all three. And Are they're you... blending together in a very nice kind of creamy way. It's... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm glad the husk is there to kind of create this kind of earthy platform that the other notes just kind of cavort on. It's really comforting and nice and relatively gentle. I mean, the white tea has like a sharpness. Go figure. But overall... A tea sharpness. Yeah. This is another one that I think that you could wear and people might notice that you smell nice, but it's not going to be like... It doesn't read as some kind of like perfume just smells like things smelling nice travelers under a tree observed by foxes is also a fun thing to say i mean it's not as like gratifying as telling someone that you smell like peach vulva but like they'll be like they'll get to like the fourth word in that name and already be sorry they asked so i love one of my favorite things is to make people a bit sorry that they asked all right we're um i mean we're rounding the corner galen you almost there we didn't mean to burn you out um oh. okay oh yes i think i bottled this one under the foot warmer and you know there are people there's a foot warmer you learn a bit about history here in terms of how people for example warmed their feet um this is another foot stuff perfume it's another foot stuff perfume should be a whole like there should be a product tag on our page that just says foot stuff jeez smoldering pine wood black pepper hoe wood amber embers amber embers amber embers amber embers leather Please welcome to the stage amber embers, 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 embers. leather <laughs> green tea and a silken red musk so after smelling the amount of perfumes we've just smelled this is the kind of thing that i am a little worried about being so burnt that i can't really properly evaluate i will say though in the bottle this pine is really unlike anything that we have smelled. It's just a whole different dimension. It was very woody, peppery. Yes, a woody, peppery pine. Like it really like smells smooth. like not like pine needles. Like it smells like freshly chopped wood. And that's probably because, you know, there's hoe wood in there also. So it's just like really making it really woody. I can smell it from here. I can smell the amber coming up from underneath. I feel like the green tea doesn't even have a chance in this one of manifesting. This is like a really wonderfully, um, I don't know, like it's not like wintry, but there's a kind of like a nice cool woodsy quality to this. Really kind of like, I mean, it has an erotic quality though because of the amber and the musk, you know? And uh, I mean, I'm not like picking out the leather immediately, but I totally trust that it's in there. Because there's just kind of like a nice warm, you know, saddle worn quality to this. It really, kind of, it actually weirdly reminds me of out being on horseback in the woods, which is not something I've done in a long time. And I certainly was not doing foot stuff. This is just gorgeous. It's so funny too, because I don't know like what I was expecting, like maybe a more um, feminine scent in this instance, because the woman is so prominent in the artwork, but like really it's like incredibly neutral and just sort of belongs to the setting. I don't know. It's great. I think the leather is kind of coming up as time goes by. Um, here's one that I know you've been waiting for. We bottled this the other day and we were remarkably um, astonished by the pure yeastiness of unsubtle euphemism. I could smell it for hours afterwards. The scent is milk bread, amaretto, star anise, almond cream, and cardamom. In the bottle, like Galen pointed out that there's something almost kind of popcorny about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, salty. it's 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 a salty, salty, baked bready scent, and there is definitely like almost like popcorn or pretzels. I, this is almost too it much does. For me. It has like a it has like a pretzel quality to it. <laughs> like with the, you know, because I mean, you don't get to smell pretzels baking that often, except for like maybe at a pretzel cart at the mall or something. That's yeah. It really <laughs> smells like pretzels. Thank you. <laughs> but there's I, like these like they're un rising I up underneath it like <laughs> the amaretto and the almond cream I like i mean i don't know where else to, i don't i'm running out of places <laughs> to put it myself i'm just gonna like make something up i really want to try it on i'm really fascinated by this 
It's unlike anything else. On the skin, I think it's going to like dry down into maybe, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. What does a scent like this do? What does it want? What have we unleashed? I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much smell in the air. <laughs> I know, it's like, I don't I mean, <laughs> I can smell it, but I'm smelling like a million other things. Help! I mean, this, okay, so, like, I mean, it really takes you to, like, a bakery where there's a lot of different things going on, um, and any one thing in the bakery is not gonna taste, like, all of those smells, you mm -hmm. know? It kind of reminds me of when we made the carnival, or the lab rat and the carnival rat, which were, like, the smell of a bunch of bee pals mixed together to give you the general scent of what it was like to be in the lab or at our booth. This is, like, a very unusual gourmand. Yes. Like, it definitely smells, all of the components are edible. Um, what are they all doing together? So it really does kind of have like a banquet quality. And of course the artwork is like the most unsubtle euphemism where you've got like this bun that is like split and then you've got this like roll, ready roll that's like next a, to the bun, next to the bun. And it's like, ha ha ha. To say so, that it's unsubtle is the yeah. truth. Um, the cardamom is definitely kind of rising up in this. It's just like, you know, a clash of different, um, breads. It's like, this is the smell of two breads doing it. Two, two different breads. Well, there you go. Both alike in dignity. There is nothing dignified about what these breads are up to. I have to say that the, like, the kind of yeastiness is like dying down on it. And it's like, do you want to? I'll try. <laughs> it's too much. And we've lost Galen. I keep Sensors smelling... are cooked. We've, it's like losing an airplane engine in mid-flight, you know? My... Like, one of your perf perfume smellers it's has... like... I am short-circuiting. Has bailed. Yeah. I don't know. It's also, just... all I can keep smelling is peach vulva. Like, it is radiating from maybe both of us. And well, it's making whose me... fault is that? It's making me confused. <laughs> we will finish and leave you with these thoughts on vaginal tales of the nocturnal palace. Okay, so there's f just, you know, for the sake of art appreciation, there's fully an anus in this painting. Yes. So, you know, how do we feel about that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, please, don't, please stop talking. Don't ask me how Please don't I ask feel. me questions about, I don't, I did not ask to go to the Nocturnal Palace or mm -hmm. to hear these vaginal tales. Um, <laughs> it's just like a really major close-up of some action happening and there is hair everywhere and there's an anus and you know what like what's uh in the perfume <laughs> i'm so what's glad you asked perfume? um lotus root beth i see what you did there blue lotus petals white amber mallow and vanilla cream now i know from just looking at people's orders wherever they posted that this is like a standout a lot of people were really excited about these vaginal tails i keep wanting to say veggie tails in the Nocturnal Palace. That's an entirely different scent. This vanilla cream uh, with the amber mallow vanilla cream is just like rising up right out of the bottle. But there's something about how the vanilla mixes with the lotus elements that keep it from being like too like sweet and girly and light. You know what I'm saying? Like it has interesting depths, like your anus. There's like a, also because of the lotus root and the like blue lotus petals, I mean, there's a kind of like a melancholy hush that falls over it, which reminds me of the kind of like sheet in the painting too. I like how she took those notes from the painting and put them in the scent. So it's like gentle and delicate and it has like a Can't smell it anymore. strange emotional <laughs> quality. This is like a strangely sophisticated vanilla floral, which is like a, God. I feel like there's something in particular, maybe even a bee pelt that this reminds me of. I think the amber is gonna outlast the vanilla. Like, I feel like you're just sitting here now like a hostage. Like, people are gonna be worried that I've trafficked you, and now when you're done smelling perfumes, you can't leave. Help me. <laughs> so you have nothing to say about vaginal tales of the nocturnal palace. I, all I'm, I'm smelling I can't smell anything anymore, and my head hurts, our so video, no. I, <laughs> our video is wrecked. I've I mean, actually lost We've it. gone too far. Our video is wrecked. I'm happy you can make out individual fragrances, because I'm, I'm just, like, smelling 
too much. Maybe what we've learned from this video is that we should have broken this up into three videos instead of two giant ones. Aha! Uh -huh. That being said... is a lot. There's, like, only so much arm space. Yes. You know? I didn't burn out as quickly as you here, but... I seem to place mine in, like, close proximity to each other, and that really kind of screwed me up. And yeah. then I'm like, well, now I can't put anything any other place without interfering. Uh, this is how we learn. I gotta go. You know? I mean, we've only been... We've been doing this for a year, but we have so much to learn. Um, I just didn't want to keep people waiting for... An even longer time to find out what some of these smell like. So hopefully my impressions are somewhat useful. I think and they should be. Hopefully Galen's um, conscientious objection to being here is um, entertaining. It's the headache to some. Yeah. It's fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, um, we will. We have more to come back to at the end of the week with Lupercalia general catalog scents and. Um, we still have lunacy fragrances to do. Like, we are basically, you know, the uh, canary in the gilded cage here. But instead of um, singing, we just talk about perfumes based on artwork that has an anus in it. Well, why don't we let Galen off the hook? And I'm interested, some of you are probably already receiving your orders with Lupercalia perfumes in them and Shungas, and we'd love to hear more about your impressions and if you smelled what we smelled and um, as ever thank you for your patience as we eventually get to the point in covering all of this and that's it shungas y'all 2021 yeah <laughs> bye